Hi guys, welcome to uh, another episode of our podcast. Today, my guest is uh, Michael H- H- Hardley. Uh, did I pronounce it right? Hardley, right, Michael? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michael is a CEO and founder and CEO of Mindhull, um, and uh, you know the company around the risk management. Michael, this is a, one of the topic you know because uh, I run IT technology company as well. Risk management is so so crucial, especially this time of era where we're going through right now with the COVID. And uh, it's I'm looking forward to our discussion, learning from you. Uh, uh, you know, more getting get, getting some more perspective around risk management, and I'm sure that business leaders who are watching it, they'll find a huge value in this discussion as well. Because risk is part of the business, no matter what business we are in, right? Risk is always part of that. So, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. If you can walk us through about uh, Mindtel, you know what it's all about, and, and what do you guys do there, uh, Michael? Yeah, uh, Mindtel is a risk and performance data company. Um, okay. We're based in Toronto. We have an enterprise uh, SaaS solution that uh, captures information, t- captures data from machines, people, and equipment to answer two fundamental questions of risk. Yeah. Uh, what's the current risk exposure and how effective are our critical controls right now? Uh, Mindtel operates the intersection of risk management, human factors, and data science to drive a performance thinking approach uh, to risk management, which is complementary to the results approach uh, to risk management, which a lot of organizations uh, are engaged in now. Mm-hmm. If you can walk us so how we gather this data and what area are we gathering the data and, and what kind of risk, uh, you know, what area of risk are we talking business risk or health and safety? You know, recently the COVID health and safety risks are very, very a proponent as well. So which area and, and how do we gather data about it? Yeah, we're, we're focused primarily on ESG risk management, so environmental social governance risk management. Yeah. Uh, but but let me take a walk it back and say, say, you know, how did the company come about and why did the company come about, really, I think is important. Yeah. Uh, so I, I spent 10 years of my career, my first 10 years of my career, uh, working for uh, Shell primarily in the North Sea Global Headquarters and the, the, the North Caspian Sea. Uh, and my last job in oil and gas, I was responsible for all the health, safety, environmental risks for the offshore component of what was the largest project uh, in the world at the time. Yeah. Uh, so we had 6,200 people working offshore, 40 different nationalities, 20 different languages being spoken. Uh, and one day in April, we got news that Deepwater Horizon had exploded in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. And our installation manager brought us into his office and, and said, yeah, could this eventually happen to us? Right? And mm-hmm. it was kind of my job to be able to answer those two questions I talked about before, risk exposure, control performance. Mm-hmm. And with the, the information that I had in front of me, you know, I couldn't de- definitively say no uh, to, that, to that manager's question. And that's mm-hmm. where I realized that we need to change the way we measured and communicated uh, risk and performance data, not only within organizations, but also between organizations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so for more broadly, you know, health, safety, environment, uh, as that has grown, uh, certainly in the mining sector to the ESG space, um, I became an enterprise risk manager with a large gold mining company, Barrick Gold. Uh, mm-hmm. I was there for four or five years and supporting all the functions and sites really to be focusing on the efficacy of the controls that they put in place, right? Mm-hmm. Because that is really what uh, you know, management is about. It's about measuring, analyzing, and improving uh, you know, the, the, the areas of operation. And we keep, kept a, you know, a tight focus on, uh, on, on ESG. Mm-hmm. So really, this is where I've come from uh, mm-hmm. to, to start Mindtel. Uh, really is, you know, exercising kind of 15 years of professional frustrations to, to have that system that I always wanted as a practitioner. Right? Yeah. Because the problem that we're solving is getting reliable and actual information into the hands of decision makers about those controls that mitigate those uh, material or catastrophic uh, ESG risks. Mm-hmm. So that's really where Mindtel has come from. Um, mm-hmm. and, and now we're service, we're able to service um, large, medium and large size, uh, complex industries, typically in the goods producing sectors. Mm-hmm. So think of mining, oil and gas, utilities, uh, construction, manufacturing, food production, anywhere where you've got a, a critical mass of, uh, of, of people who are interfacing with a number of critical controls uh, on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to be able to then 
harness all that information within the organization so that we can link that information, not only to decision-making, but yeah. also use that as part of engagement with uh, external stakeholders. So mm-hmm. think host governments, uh, local communities, investors, mm-hmm. uh, regulators, insurers. Uh, and then we've also got that information uh, you know, downstream to be able to attach that to the, to the product. So we can you know, start thinking about an ESG index and materials provenance uh, on yeah. the back of all of, these, uh, all of these goods that are being produced by these very, very important industries, uh, mm-hmm. not only here in Canada, but around the world. Mm-hmm. Wow, very interesting. So, um, so we, we got data not only from a risk management, but it's driven, it's driven all the way through product development, which you're saying is, you know, so, so it's measurable data. Um, so how do we how do we can, uh, manage that? You know, do we install systems for for in places to to gather the data? How do we collect how do we collect the data? Um, a lot of that is just a human process, I guess, in a business side, right? Um, yeah, it's about yeah for 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 some uh, organizations going to be about 50 50 for other organizations going to be more uh, automated data so think manufacturing mm-hmm. uh, for for an organization organizations in the mining space there's still a lot of uh, administrative uh, data that uh, that's being captured again on the ESG space on the the financial side on the pure operational side uh, you know we you know, there, there's a lot of uh, service providers out there, mm-hmm. but with Mindtel, you know, we are a risk performance data company that has a SaaS technology. So we're not a technology company looking to to kind of find our way in the risk space. Mm-hmm. Um, and and as a result, we uh, really act as a trusted advisor as well as that uh, technology provider. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in, in terms of you know, capturing all this information that, that we need to capture the data that we need to do so to, to be able to answer those two questions I talked about at, at the beginning. Mm-hmm. What's the current risk exposure? How effective are critical controls right now? We really need to, to treat this as a change management project mm-hmm. um, and say, okay, if we want to be able to measure these, then perhaps what we've been doing before isn't going to be enough. Mm-hmm. And so we understand the, the context. So what's the... Yeah. You know, what are the material risks? Um, mm-hmm. You know, what's the 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 the, the, the cultural, geopolitical, etc. Um, uh, mm-hmm. inputs to the, the you know the environment in which we're operating, uh, and and then we help organizations really build that capability to know what to measure and uh, the right people know when to act, because uh, that's super important in in mm-hmm. really helping our uh, us achieve our ultimate goal with our with our, the organizations that we work with, which is really building this capacity to fail safely, mm-hmm. right? So that failure doesn't uh, mean catastrophe, mm-hmm. um, but also absence of catastrophe doesn't mean that we're perfect. Mm-hmm. We realize that organizations are by nature imperfect. Mm-hmm. And so we have to be able to, to drive three things within an organization at the capacity level mm-hmm. is that uh, capacity to detect those problems where we have those problems in you know, in, in controls that are mitigating these catastrophic ESG risks, yeah. we've got to be able to intervene. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we've also got to be able to inform not only internally, but also externally, oh, yeah. uh, ready to, to, to help uh, humanize that risk management mm-hmm. process, because it is not just an absolutely technical uh, approach. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it overlays that, um, you know, the, the, the technology, the organization, and mm-hmm. also the humans that are uh, that, that are, are, are working in that, in that space. Mm-hmm. If you can talk about uh, what's the traditional approach to gathering this data, this data or managing a risk on the environment, uh, Michael, you know, what has been a traditional approach yeah. before you came? So, and, and where do you think the shortfalls are with that approach? If you can talk about that, I think that will help understand, you know, where we're coming from. Yeah. And I alluded to moving towards a performance thinking approach to, to risk management. Right now, yeah. a, a lot of organizations are a results thinking approach. So yeah. they look at the number of uh, incidents, right? The number of, say, spills from an environmental standpoint, mm-hmm. uh, and then collect some data around that. Um, and then they report on a lot of outputs. Yeah. But there's nothing really that gives us that the, the, the confidence and comfort that those outputs were achieved in a safe, repeatable, or sustainable way, mm-hmm. right? And when we look at a lot of risk management data, it's a lot of incident management data. So it's looking backwards. Um, mm-hmm. So results thinking is, uh, you know, measuring what happened, whereas performance thinking is measuring what's happening, 
right? So it's, it's very context driven, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's confirming control existence on the results thinking side versus testing the effectiveness uh, of mm-hmm. those controls. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that's what we're doing, right? So the, the, there's a big difference between incident management, which is kind of looking backwards Mm-hmm. Uh, and risk management, which is looking forwards. Mm-hmm. And we feel that the performance thinking approach is, is looking forwards. If you're, if you're in your vehicle, uh, the, the rear view mirror is maybe 5% of the, uh, the, mm-hmm. the volume of your, uh, of your windshield, mm-hmm. right? And that's probably the proportion that you need to be uh, looking at performance forward versus results yeah. backwards. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone said, you know, Really, the only time when um, when a rear view mirror is, is at full use is when you're going backwards. Yeah, uh, which a lot of core organizations obviously want to uh, want to yeah. move forward. So I think that's the, the 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 kind of cleanest way to describe performance thinking, risk management, looking forwards, mm-hmm. versus the results thinking and incident management, looking backwards. Not to say that it's not important, mm-hmm. but we need to be able to have that performance information to to provide that confidence and comfort that the results that we do achieve. Mm-hmm. Are, are safe, repeatable, and sustainable. I see. So if you, if you follow that performance thinking, Michael, is there room also for predictability as well for future? Can, you know, if, if this is what's happening, can we predict yeah. that where risk could be and can we manage that before the risk happen as well, um, you know, instead of uh, after, you know, what's happening right now? Yeah, and, and we're working with um, academics in the AI machine learning space who are advisors, and we've got team members who are uh, who are helping us to integrate AI machine learning into our uh, enterprise SaaS uh, platform, so- software as a service, yeah. uh, where we're capturing data from people, machines, equipment, and really looking at better ways to be able to proactively predict and prevent uh, mm-hmm. control failings rather than be in this cycle of react, repair, repeat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we see data as being hugely important, uh, not only to predict those control failures, but then also to have that performance information available for decision-making, available for uh, engaging with uh, external stakeholders. Mm-hmm. And then as I alluded to, being able to link that, those data, that, that, that information from a performance standpoint to the products that, uh, the company X produces um, these and goods and, and goods that are being produced, but we need to have the information available to us. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't you think that'd be very beneficial for a company if we can get there that, you know, uh, we can avoid the risk before it happens financially and especially for health and safety reasons, right? If you can avoid those environment risks or health and safety or any of the financial risks, that'd be a lot more profitable for companies to, to get into the, uh, that, that area. Uh, absolutely. Well, there's a you know, huge uh, internal assurance piece uh, to mm-hmm. that, but you need to have the, 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 the output here is you need to have transparency around control performance, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and control performance is not an absence of failure. Uh, it's not waiting for an auditor to tell me that my, my controls are okay. I need to be able to know this through that kind of three lines of assurance, my frontline operations, uh, my subject matter expertise, and then that 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 external party or third party uh, auditor who mm-hmm. comes in and 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 validates our our good performance. Mm-hmm. So not only does it support that internal decision making, which I talked about before, but it, there's certainly a, a lot of value in this information to be able to differentiate oneself from their competition. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I mean, this is not coming from me. This is coming from uh, Larry Fink from uh, BlackRock. Mm-hmm. who is implored companies in which he's investing in, which BlackRock's investing in, to uh, increase their investment, increase their, um, their focus on ESG uh, data, ESG performance data. And this is not just the, you know, the, the reports that uh, the outputs, mm-hmm. uh, greenhouse gases, number of incidents, et cetera, but mm-hmm. the underlying performance data uh, mm-hmm. a, as well. A, a lot of people... Um, You've probably heard about the the twenty four trillion dollar with a T opportunity that's uh, available for companies who can get this right, uh, and that twenty four trillion dollars is the estimated value that millennials will be worth in in this decade, and ninety three percent of whom are going to invest only in companies that uh, have a a, a well stated purpose that mm-hmm. links to a social impact. 
mm-hmm. right? And so for an, an, an industry sector like mining, which many people see as you know fairly archaic, mm-hmm. uh, this information is absolutely critical to unlocking the capital that mining as an industry needs to be able to unlock the, uh, provide, pardon me, the, the decarbonization metals, the transition metals mm-hmm. uh, that we're going to need to, to enable us to, to, to move to that fourth industrial uh, energy revolution mm-hmm. um, and that clean energy revolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've seen the examples uh, here in Canada over the past, over the past number of decades, but certainly the past uh, few weeks of, mm-hmm. of what that looked Looks like so we, we need to be able to engender that trust uh, but millennials are not you know and investors are not going to 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 trust organizations unless they can see that information unless that information is tangible it, it helps to tell the story of the purpose and the impact that that organization is is having uh, not only just on you know that single investor's life but also the uh, global society mm-hmm Yeah, kind of competitive advantage you mentioned that especially, you know, um, it makes you know organization more lean, more efficient, you know, if, if you go that way. Um, you know, government should be, you know, I, I would assume that governments are, you know, you know, uh, should be a, in a support of this and, and should be helping where we are in a, you know, are you are you, you know, uh, is that you know you getting any help from government? You know, where's where's the organizations that are, you know, that always are, you know going towards you know six sigma or trying to be lean on or more efficient, you know, yeah. are you getting the support from all those organizations or where you are with those? Well, so we're, we're not getting a lot of help from government. Um, uh, mm-hmm. Frankly, I think um, the, the, the expectations and requirements uh, of, uh, of organizations, I think that needs to mature. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think we need to be able to, you know, uh, you know the, the classic example is we, we've all been a 10 year old at some point who's, you know, done a maths class and mm-hmm. you know got the feedback from their from their teacher said well you didn't show your work yeah but i got the right answer yeah but you didn't yeah. show your work so you only get half marks yeah, yeah. well this is the same thing with with, with esg reporting right yeah. is that yeah you know, we may report out that the outputs are within targets etc but mm-hmm. if we don't have that if we can't show our work that the risks that we've got are um are, are being well controlled because the the controls that are in place are functioning as intended by design, mm-hmm. um, then we're really only seeing half the picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so so from a policy standpoint, I don't want to see necessarily more regulation. Mm-hmm. I want to see the, 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 the regulations kind of be bolstered in terms of, you know, well, these are the expectations around uh, uh, risk exposure uh, and, and therefore the requirements are going to, you know, fall out, uh, fall out from that. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. So yeah, it looks like there's a lot of work needs to be done before we get to that step. It looks like, you know, we got to collect the data, um, a lot more control points before we get there. Um, if you talk about COVID, how did COVID impact, uh, you know, this, this your process and your initiatives, uh, uh, Michael, you know, where, you know, did you have to make some changes to your approach or how do you kind of dealt with the COVID? Yeah, well, we're a very young company. We've been in, you know, business for, you know, you know called two or three years. Uh, so, Uh, we've had, uh, effectively lived half our life <laughs> uh, as, a, as an organization with COVID. But, you know, COVID is, uh, is an ESG risk. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, there's, there's a hazard that presents a risk to an organization. For some organizations, it's existential. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some organizations, it has absolutely wiped out uh, an operation. Uh, but we decide to say, well, let's treat this the same way we would treat any risk. Yeah. yeah. So what are the controls that we need to put in place? Mm-hmm. And then how well are those controls working? So very simple, right? Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, from, from a COVID standpoint, uh, organizations no longer can rely on that psychological contract that healthy people are entering a healthy workspace. Um, and speaking with one of my mining colleagues uh, last March, so kind of uh, before everything, uh, before everything locked down, um, He, he said something very interesting to me. His mm-hmm. wife works for a different mining company. So it's a very mm-hmm. mining uh, focused family. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said, you know, it's interesting. My, my wife said at dinner uh, for the first time that she's not comfortable with me going to a mine site. And I thought, well, mm-hmm. if mining can't convince miners that its sites are safe and healthy, what chance do we have with the lay public? 
what chance mm-hmm. do we have with local communities or, or regulators? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's when I realized that we could easily spin Mindtel into, uh, you know, pivot Mindtel into tools that can be used to provide that confidence and comfort that, that healthy people are entering a healthy workspace. Mm-hmm. So we created uh, a, you know, a, um, an employee, sc- um, employee health screening mm-hmm. uh, module. So this is you know, the screen that we do every day, but uh, being able to provide that kind of robust uh, reporting, triggering case management. Um, mm-hmm. We then provided uh, workplace control monitoring. So mm-hmm. how are all the things like PPE and distancing and uh, sanitization, et cetera, mm-hmm. how are all those controls, uh, how are those controls working? Where are we failing? When can, how can we better uh, detect these problems and then intervene Mm -hmm. uh, on on those problems? And then lastly, our workplace health management module, which takes all the data from uh, screening, vaccinations, testing, uh, case management, and provides that uh, one one pane of glass overview to give uh, leaders the confidence that, yeah, healthy people are entering uh, a Mm -hmm. healthy workplace. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so we've had uh, some success with that. Um, A couple of examples I I can share Mm-hmm. Uh, one of our mining clients is, is in uh, Northern BC. Um, mm-hmm. So there's a, uh, they're adjacent to a number of uh, First Nations uh, in, in the area. And mm-hmm. uh, there was an incident where one of the members of that local First Nations were, were not permitted to site because they had failed, uh, they had failed the screening. And the, the chief of that First Nation was rightly uh, interested to know, well, what was the problem? Uh, but more to his point, he was thinking, well, how are you providing assurance that, uh, that, that, that everyone is going through this process? Mm-hmm. Because I've got a number of people who are going to your, to your mindset and coming back to my community where, you know, healthcare services are not to, to the level they are here in the South. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the GM uh, hopped on a Zoom call just like this, mm-hmm. uh, g- pulled up my Intel data, and within 15 minutes was able to show the chief all the uh, the screening that he himself had done as the as the general manager, wow. um, and it really gave that uh, the, mm-hmm. the the chief that First Nation that confidence and comfort that okay, well this is a repeatable process. Mm-hmm. You know they are looking after everyone here, and I feel much more confident uh, as, as a neighbor uh, mm-hmm. to this uh, to this mindset because you can appreciate their concern where you've got people coming from. Uh, all over Canada and sometimes all over the world to these uh, these yeah. facilities, mm-hmm. that it could be a a, 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 a hotspot. And certainly, some some mine sites around the country certainly have been. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was one great example of being able to uh, engage externally mm-hmm. with this information and, and to build that trust that uh, that you know that, that this organization were doing everything that they could to ensure that healthy people were entering a, a healthy workplace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that definitely. But if you you know if you can show that there's a d- data behind your decision making process, that definitely builds a trust between people. That you know, it's it's not somebody's opinion. There's a data behind it. It's a- absolutely, your decision is based yeah. on some data, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, this is where we can pull out a lot of biases, right? Yeah. And 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 the way that we've got Mindtel set up, where we could be in the hands of you know of everybody at the of everyone at the site we're actually unlocking a lot of uh, diversity inclusion into this decision-making process because mm-hmm. we're not relying on single datum points. We're relying on bell curves uh, to mm-hmm. make our, make our decisions. And, and we're getting that information from the, you know, from the front line, mm-hmm. uh, which, which is, which is really exciting. And yeah, that goes to the, the second point where another one of our clients uh, had a third party auditor come in Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were blown away with the you know, with the data analytics that uh, this organization had been able to set up in such a short period of time, uh, where they hadn't seen anything like this before, um, uh, not just related to COVID, but related to any uh, kind of ESG risk. Uh, and mm-hmm. so the the audit was passed with uh, with flying colors. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so that was a, a, another good news story uh, for for us. But it, it more to the point, it it, it gave our clients that capacity to to really inform external stakeholders mm-hmm. that you know we know when the controls are, are, are working we know we can detect when they're not working and we can intervene and then using our our analytics package our, our mm-hmm. ai machine learning we can actually um 
assess the, the, the value of these interventions by looking at the pre and post data. These are mm -hmm. all great stories that we can use to share uh, you know, both internally and externally about, about how we're managing these risks. Because at, at the end of the day, you know, companies have, have got to, you know, are, are storytellers. Mm -hmm. right? This is our purpose. This is how yeah. we. This is how we execute this. Mm -hmm. And if if we can provide them with uh, greater data, more reliable and actual information to be able to tell those stories, then you know, then we've done our job. Mm -hmm. This is probably uh, what I'm about to ask. Probably a little bit more, you know, help for investors as well. But if you, you mentioned diversity, uh, Michael, when you're getting that data and you're making a decision, a lot of business leaders, uh, you know, I, I've been talking to recently. Uh, very cautious about making decisions, uh, especially, you know, when you're talking about there's so much social issues going on right now um, out there. And, you know, it could be gender issues. It could be race issues. It could be so many different issues, right? Um, you mentioned diversity. Can the gathering, you know, business leader, they need a data to make a decision sometime, you know, then they can back it up. But without a, the data, they sometimes they're making decisions and they're very cautious about it. If I make a decision, I don't want to get sued. I don't want to get be, you know, jeopardizing, you know, some of the, the, the point my brand's making. Yeah, and this data be help um, be helpful in that that regard as well. But so business leader have the data what they're making decisions on, and what can they do for investors? For this, this is a big for investors because now they can see how companies making decisions before they invest their money in. Yeah, so I think there's there's two parts there. So let, let's take that um, uh, the, the the decision social. hesitancy. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. First, uh, yeah. on, on, on the management piece, because I, I think this 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 is important. Is I don't want to make a mistake, yeah. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I, I'm not going to make a decision. That in itself is a decision. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, 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 not to decision. do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but I, I think we, we, what we're we're looking for is that if we don't have reliable actual information that we can make these decisions on, then you're right. That decision hesitancy is going to become more and more pervasive, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and that's an opportunity lost for, mm -hmm. you know, for, for a lot of, uh, for a lot of organizations. So I would say, I would say, okay, well, let's take this back to a risk management first principles approach and say, mm -hmm. what's the context here, right? Yeah. What's the risk, right? Uh, what are the things that we're doing that we're, that we're, we're using to control this risk and how well are we doing that? Mm -hmm. right? If I can answer those three questions, then, then the decision I can make, I can take with confidence, mm -hmm. uh, but then also I've got the data to be able to assess the value of that, of that decision. Mm -hmm. So we can say, Hey, we had, we, we, we detected problem X, we tried solution Y and we found a solution Y didn't work. Mm -hmm. Right. So then we went to solution Z and solution Z said, Oh yeah, well, this was a much better uh, decision to take. Okay. Now mm -hmm. I've got this great learning that I can share within my own organization with, you know, within the industry, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is really, really important. So, yeah. uh, you know, better driving, um, you know, ESG decision-making uh, through, through high value information is, is going to be really important. Mm -hmm. So that, that I wanted to get, get onto the, uh, the investor piece because yeah. mm -hmm. in, in investors, um, particularly in, in the, 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 the minus the complex industries mm -hmm. um, who may not have a, sound technical knowledge on, uh, on, on, on any of these industries um, are, are looking for better information. So really there, there's typically three buckets of risk. There's your operational, your financial, and your ESG. Okay. Well, the operational financial, those ones are, are, are pretty well understood uh, mm -hmm. within the investment community, but the investors such as the Black Rocks, such as the, the millennial hedge fund manager, such as the 93% of millennial investors who say, I need to see purpose. I need to see uh, more transparency in how that purpose is being achieved, mm -hmm. right? This is actually going to be a huge differentiator for, for early adopters, right? So those companies who have got the information uh, put in place to be able to say, here's how, here, here's our top risks. Yeah. Here are all the controls that we have in place. And here's been the performance over time. You pick up any uh, sustainability report, pick up any um, quarterly report, uh, year-end report, and you look at the risk sections, mm -hmm. and there's still a lot of, for lack of a better term, flowery narratives around, mm -hmm. you know, those things that are material to the business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know what the material risks are, but yeah, if, if you don't know what those are, then maybe you're not in the right job. Yeah. Uh, but the, those second questions about what are we doing about those mm -hmm. and how well are we doing? 
well, your know, narratives aren't going to cut it, right? Mm-hmm. And so this is where we see when we're successful, when companies are incorporating our data and information into those uh, year-end reporting packages or mm-hmm. quarterly reporting packages, as well as using our dashboards and our alerts that we're that we've that we're that we're generating mm-hmm. uh, to make those day-to-day decisions uh, at an operational level. Mm-hmm. You, you know, picture yourself as an investor. You go to company A, company B in sector in the same sector, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. If company A can say, yeah, here are material risks. Here's all the controls that we have in place. And here's how well those controls have, have performed over time. And here's a couple of stories about when we detected a problem, you know, we intervened uh, and we learned a great lesson versus mm-hmm. the other uh, company that says, well, here's our flowery narratives with our policies and procedures. Yeah. Which one would you trust? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, it builds huge trust in an investor also in a company who would be trying to raise funds as well. You know, for them to, present their, their approach as well. They get a data, you know, it builds confidence in them, in them as well. When they're presenting, when they're building their business case and they have a data to support, you know, it builds confidence in, a, you know, a management and also investors. Um, it solves both problems. Yeah, and, and, and also from, from an insurance standpoint as well, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the more information that you can put out there, the greater competition you're going to, you're going to attract all the greater competition because more people are going to, uh, more invest, uh, insurers, pardon me, are going to want to say, hey, we, we want to invest you be- in you because, uh, so we want to be uh, your insurance partner mm-hmm. uh, because you know, we're getting so much more insight from you than we are from, you know, people in the same space. Yeah. So we s- still may insure them, but it may be at a, at a higher premium, for mm-hmm. example. Mm-hmm. So, so there's, uh, you know, and, and we'd love to say that the return on investment is, you know, is an easy calculation. It's not because really we're creating a new market with this uh, mm-hmm. performance thinking uh, uh, approach to risk management. Mm-hmm. But we see, you know, kind of this, uh, that the return on investment conversation in three ways. Mm-hmm. The output that you get is, is greater transparency. Uh, and you're going to lower your data management costs on, on capturing this with a digital uh, enterprise platform. That's mm-hmm. that's a that's a pretty straightforward one. Mm-hmm. Second one, where you the, the outcome is the assurance, you have greater assurance both internally in terms of decision making and externally um, uh, with your um, you, you, with with your stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the the effect of that is now I'm a much more resilient organization, mm-hmm. right? So a, a COVID comes up, another uh, material risk comes up, emerges an opportunity emerges and we can say, okay, great. We can go through that context capability capacity uh, process and build that into, into Mindtel at, uh, at our site. And all of a sudden now we're able to take on this opportunity and, and have a, a, um, a, a more shallow mm-hmm. and, um, and, and a tighter learning curve than we would have had you know, had we not had, uh, had we not had this in place. So that transparency, mm-hmm. assurance, resiliency, that's where, mm-hmm. uh, frankly, good risk management should be focusing, uh, should be focusing its, its outputs, outcome and effect, uh, respectively. Mm-hmm. You mentioned, it looks like you, you know, you, you setting up a new market for yourself, you know, um, and every time you go in this, this you know, path where you're setting up a new market, because that's not been done before you, you embarking on that. Talk about how big is the education piece in that. You know, you have to, before you can uh, push your products or services out, you have to educate people because now you're showing them different ways of looking at few things, right? Yeah. So is, is that one of the challenges? I, I take it that the education is a big piece. Uh, is how it's been received, you know, are people ready uh, for, for a different perspective? You know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, education is a really tough one, right? And, um, you know, but for, for, for us, um, we're trying to identify the, the the ten percent of companies that want to that want to lead, right? Okay. And and unfortunately, uh, it's trying to find the one or two people within those organizations who who get this and have the skills to uh, you know to 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 lead from the side, mm-hmm. right? Um, and and you know, mining is not alone when I say this uh, that it's a an industry that wants to finish second. Mm-hmm. Uh, is in a race to finish second. Uh, so, so we think that if we can identify those kind of the, the, those ten percent in those core industries that we've talked about, and we can educate them, then we'll be able to kind of pull 
uh, a lot of the, the 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 remainder of the industry uh, along in the you know in the, in the vapor trails as 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 it were. But mm-hmm. uh, no, you're, you're you're right. The education piece is 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 tough, um, and so we've yeah we've got creative about how we can uh, provide more material, more content, um, and uh, yeah. But it, it, that that that's absolutely an ongoing challenge for us. Mm-hmm. So is it easy to uh, educate operational people, uh, uh, Michael, or is it easy to uh, uh, you know educate management a little bit easier, or is it an investor a little bit easier to educate? You know, would you would you um, I'd say, you know, all of them at the same time, or, or was that, you know, if you show investors uh, financial benefit, uh, would that be, you know, a driving force for, to yeah. push forward? Yeah, the, two of the greatest forces are investors and board members, um, mm-hmm. you know, because, uh, yeah, when, when the board member asks for something that kind of trickles down uh, uh, for, for quite a while uh, across an organization. And, and, but I think arming investors with the right questions but the, the investors for, for me already have a lot of these questions because ESG risk, the same thing is in place as financial risk and operational risk. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've just got to be able to provide uh, them with, uh, w- w- with greater context. We were, we had planned uh, to go to New York last year um, mm-hmm. for a um, uh, current trends in mining finance uh, conference. There was going to be a lot of, uh, of, of key players uh, in the in the investment community within the mining sector, um, so we were really disappointed that that we were not able to uh, not able to go and share our perspective um, and and really kind of challenge their thinking and but also provide them with the tools to ask the right questions because as soon as they start asking the right questions, uh, again that's going to that's going to tr- uh, trickle down into an organization uh, for. Uh, getting some wins, getting some uh, runs on uh, on the board uh, is really useful to be able to, to help with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then also at the same time, uh, supporting the investment community and in, in their understanding of, of what ESG risk management uh, can and should look like. Mm-hmm. So I take it that you know your engagement with that any any organization is a, is a, I know it's part of their business, right? It's forever because uh, you're always going to manage waste, right? Is it is an ongoing you know um, engagement that you you do with the you know industry or, or is it a short term that educate their people then you can scale back or is it is it all this part of the business process? Uh, I mean, obviously, there's there's a little bit more education upfront, um, mm-hmm. but you know once we're up and running and in place, then it's a matter of um, you know uh, allowing that scope for which this is being used to to grow organically. Uh, because you'll have those success stories there. And then we've got customers coming back to us and saying, Hey, can we use my tell for, for this? Or, Hey, we've got this thing. Can, can you help us solve, you know, can you help us solve that? Mm-hmm. And with the, you know, a, a digital platform in place, uh, we're in a great position to be able to, to be able to do that. So, so we see that uh, the, the kind of land and expand approach uh, mm-hmm. that a lot of tech companies take within organizations mm-hmm. Um yeah, we won't be able to to go and you know and put the full solution in, but the, the solution will be there, and then let the the, the organization uh, add that scope as it sees fit. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Um, I'm not sure about the financial and uh, other risk, but I know operational risk for sure because that's where we deal with Michael. Risk changes over time very frequently. You know, especially in the technology sector, what risk is today it may not be tomorrow. It completely changes yeah. all the time. So I'd say, uh, take it that as an ongoing process of uh, tweaking and, and, and getting a different data based on what the what the risk look like and gathering that data and, and changing the risk as well, ongoing basis? Yeah, so I think for a lot of steady state operations, the, the, the risk profile isn't going to change drastically. There's probably a core um, 80% within, an, uh, sorry, 90% within an organization uh, that's pretty static. Uh, yeah. And across an industry would be 80% would be static, right? You'd have that yeah. kind of 20% uh, changing. Where, where that flexibility is really important is mm-hmm. in capital projects, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so those capital projects, you're going to have uh, design risks in design, uh, risks in detail design uh, that are going to be very different from, say, uh, execution or mm-hmm. operational risks. So, so being able to, to churn that, uh, to turn that over, uh, we're very excited about some of the, um, you know, the potential clients that we're we're engaged with at the moment, who are executing what now are, 
you know, $50 million projects, not that mm -hmm. big. Uh, but when these become $5 billion projects, they don't have the capacity to be able to, to, to handle all this information and then to be able to constantly be updating mm -hmm. uh, their, uh, you know, their dashboards, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we see that, uh, that, that flexibility and agility that we've got in place as being uh, a, a real uh, opportunity um, from a project standpoint, but from the, from the operational side, mm -hmm. uh, it, it by and large remains fairly static, but, Frankly, that is kind of in line with the goods producing sectors who are producing these, you know, these specific goods for, you know, mm -hmm. for their customers. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about mining, uh, mining quite a bit, but this risk management can can cannot they just be applied to any industry, uh, especially COVID. It's not only for mining; it, that could be applied to any health and say oh, yeah. uh, any industry or or yeah. uh, construction or could be uh, hospitals. It could apply to any any different industries, right? That's right. Yeah, we, we we predominantly rely on the focus on the on the goods producing sectors. But uh, mm -hmm. let's think about uh, you know people who are coming back into offices, mm -hmm. right? Um, they want to know three things. You know, am I sick? Are people around me sick? Uh, and is the environment in which I'm walking into a safe and healthy one? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can't we, we we can't answer that with policies and procedures. We've got to be able to we've got to be able to leverage data with that. So mm -hmm. so for our workplace health management module, for example, yeah, we could be working for uh, banks just as we could be working for a hospital, just we be working for you know a, a mine in northern BC. Mm -hmm. um, you know that that's fairly flexible. Now, when you get into the ESG uh, risk management platform, again, that's where our, our bread and butter is more on the. Um, on the goods producing sectors, but we could even see a, a, you know, an application within uh, within uh, healthcare as well. Um, mm. But yeah, for 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 the moment, we're focusing on those on those good producing sectors. Yeah, for COVID, that will make for any industry who's trying to you know come back to offices or people coming back to offices, it would make sense to get the data before you make a decisions. You know, instead of just making an policy procedure. Yeah, that, that that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because if, if you're if you're deciding based on a uh, you know on a, on a national vaccination rate, uh, yeah. well, you know what's the context for you, right? And so, mm -hmm. where where our workplace health management module supports you kind know, of large, complex, sometimes disparate organizations is mm -hmm. that they can look at the at the location level and say, okay, well, what's my mm -hmm. vaccination rate today? Yeah. Right. Uh, and how has that been over time? OK, well, this is stuff that I can use so to 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 use to go and say, OK, well, maybe we need to wrap up here or we, mm -hmm. we're doing really well here. We've met a target. Uh, we've met a target there. And, mm -hmm. and you're, you're doing that uh, in, a, in a reliable, frictionless way. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, th th there's going to be a, a lot of um, you know, to, I've used the word hesitancy a couple of times, but yeah. uh, yeah. It was, it's, it's probably apprehension is more uh, an, an appropriate word in terms of returning to the office. Mm -hmm. I, again, just because that psychological contract of, yeah, I'm a healthy person walking into a healthy workspace, that, that's no longer, that, that no longer applies. Yeah. So we need to be able to, in order to instill that confidence and that trust, mm -hmm. we need to have that, uh, that data and information readily available to folks. Yeah, definitely from a customer service standpoint, if you walk into somebody's on-premise store and, and you Absolutely. get the data available, hey, listen, now we got about 95% vaccinated and this is the data, you know, this is where we're at, you know, um, yeah, your national, you know, average could be something else, but if you can present your company's data, that's where you are as a company, I think that that builds a trust with the customers. Yeah, you, 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 I mean, hey, uh, people like think uh, global but act local. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and this information is uh, no different, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got to be able to provide that context. And risk management is all about context. Mm -hmm. uh, and so thinking about people, the, the, the decisions that they're making, it is uh, contextualized at, at the local level. So let's give them reliable and actual information on which to make those decisions. So, where are you guys? Where are you take? Uh, where, where are you going with the uh, Mindtel, Michael? What's what's ahead of you guys? You know, for for you talking about this year or next year's? What's the roadmap? You know, what are you? How far are you guys taking this? Uh, well, I mean, we're we're excited by the fact that um, organizations like BlackRock have submitted mm -hmm. this twenty four trillion dollar opportunity that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, McKinsey have cited that uh, AI and risk management is going to be a $500 billion industry uh, within, the, within the decade uh, annually. Um, so, so we certainly want to be able to shape how organizations are able to take advantage 
uh, of those markets. We think our performance thinking approach is very much the way to do that. Um, and so we, we've got kind of four stages. Uh, the first stage is, is measuring critical controls. If we get that right, then we're, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a great job and doing a great service uh, for, you know, for our customers. Uh, the second is to be able to build out that uh, risk exposure and monetization uh, yeah. of uh, so so we can look at well what's the current uh, exposure to unacceptable risk you know that might be forty seven mm-hmm. million dollars so we could mm-hmm. go to a GM at a you know at a mine site and she might say well forty seven million dollars I'm I'm operating a billion dollar site so that's not too bad or she may say. Well, our site's worth okay. 150 million. Yeah. All of a sudden, this is yeah, this is existential. <laughs> what do we what do we do about it? Yeah. Right. So that's the second yeah. stage. The third yeah. stage is what we see as a, a ESG index. Yeah. Um, so the the ESG scoring uh, globally is is all over the map. Uh, the Economist did a great uh, um, uh, article on on that called uh, "Scrambled ESGs," which I thought was quite clever. Yeah. Um, but we, we will provide some more consistency uh, and more reliability uh, in the in, in the ESG assessment. We think our ESG index would be able to 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 do that. Uh, mm-hmm. So this is more performance focused. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've got your you've got your results. You've got your what, those those figures that you report. But mm-hmm. then you can multiply it by our our zero to one index. We see that as being a very exciting product uh, in the mm-hmm. future. A lot of data science, a lot of machine learning uh, going into that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, lastly is around uh, materials provenance. So what is the ESG footprint of uh, an ounce of gold? Mm-hmm. Uh, of um, you know a, a box of spinach? Uh, you know. Uh, so a, a an electron that's coming into into your home, um, you know, we see that that possibility as being uh, certainly down the road, mm-hmm. um, but but this is where you're providing ultimate transparency to your customer, direct to your customers, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and and again, giving them the good, reliable, actual information on which they can go and make the decisions. And I think that the companies that are able to provide their consumers uh, and their stakeholders with that reliable actual information around how they're uh, managing their ESG risks, how they're performing in that space. Mm-hmm. Those will be the companies that uh, that, that get ahead uh, as we move into the fourth industrial revolution. Interesting. Yeah, and that will only happen if, you, if you've been gathering that data from the first four, three phases you mentioned that when you get to the fourth one, if you have that reliable data to, to depend on, that's, that that will it will trigger that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, each builds on on the other. Yes, of okay, course. Interesting. Okay. Ah, very very insightful. Um, so talk about yourself, Michael. I know you mentioned a little bit early on that you were working in a similar industry before you were where you you know saw the challenge. How did you get into all this stuff? What is you you know even before that? How did you get started so interested in the risk side of things? You know, uh, what got you so interested, in, and and what do you see that uh, you know. That's you know it's working with you for longer run. Yeah, I, I, I guess coming from a, a human factors background, uh, mm-hmm. and I was always fascinated with uh, what not only influences but informs decision making. Uh, I, I thought you know early in my career, well, why are we not leveraging more of this, you know, risk and performance information into our data to day to day decision making. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and you know that was that anecdote was backed up by uh, again McKinsey, who looked at um, uh, a study they did uh, called ten years ago, plus me fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, they looked at the the amount of data that was being captured on an offshore rig in the Gulf of Mexico, mm-hmm. um, and even then it was kind of in, nearing the the terabytes of data. Uh, but then they looked at the volume of those data that were informing decisions on a day-to-day mm-hmm. basis. Mm-hmm. And it was less than one half of 1%, right? Mm-hmm. So for, for me, recognize that data capture isn't the problem that we're trying to solve, mm-hmm. right? And, and everyone's heard this, no, not everyone, but many people have heard the stat that uh, 90% of all data have been captured over time has been, have been captured in the last two years, mm-hmm. right? So data capture is not the problem here. And what I found is that, you know, within offshore, whether it was, you know, paper-based systems, spreadsheets, et cetera, we were capturing a lot of data. We weren't able to harness that and, and inform decision-making 
um, necessarily. So, so really, this has been a kind of stone in my shoe professionally for, like I said, for for for, the, for those fifteen years. Mm-hmm. And then the to the, the 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 catastrophes uh, that um, I had indirectly experienced or industry directly experienced that, that in which I was working. I said, well, there, there's got to be a different way to, you know, to, to do this. And, and, and so that's why I took a look at this from a, from a human standpoint, from mm-hmm. a decision-making standpoint, rather than from a, a technical standpoint, because if you just look at it from the technical standpoint, yeah, then you're only fo- focused on the data capture. Yeah. Right? But the yeah. real problem that we need to solve, the problem that I saw early on in my career and now, you know, making my best effort to, to, to solve that mm-hmm. is, well, how do we give decision makers, you know, reliable, actual information at the time at which they're making decisions? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, and that's a, it's a big nut to crack. Um, it's a really big nut to crack. But I think if we can, if we can do that, and I really feel that we're on that path to be able to, to do that at scale. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the other thing is to be able to do these things at scale then um, yeah, we're, we're in a position to give a, an industry like mining mm-hmm. um, a really good platform of, of data information for which they can go and, and, and ask for the trust mm-hmm. of, their, of their stakeholders, which are gonna be so important in that social license to operate, mm-hmm. um, either whether it's from an investor, a uh, local community, or like my friend's wife, <laughs> yeah. who yeah. Uh, you know who didn't want him to go to a who didn't want him to go Obvious. to a mine site, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, all all of these people are equally important in in, in us being able to responsibly um, uh, produce the, the the transition and decarbonization metals that we need. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Where do you see the latest technology innovations? Is that helping you to solve the problem, Michael? You know, what are you, what the problem you're trying to solve? Is that, do you get any help with that? You mentioned AI a little bit of a discussion. How about other technology yeah. advancements? Are those, those are new advancements in the technologies helping you solve the problem? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of great technologies coming out. Mining in the last, you know, call it five, five, seven years have really uh, expanded their, their use of, of technology. My concern is that these are, are points are uh, point solutions. Mm-hmm. So now we've got you know, a number of point solutions, but we're not again able to harness all that information together. So, yeah. so Mindtel, as it as the name suggests, you know, we gather intelligence from uh, machines, people, equipment to be able to answer the questions around risk exposure and control effectiveness. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that these things are 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 great. Um, but we've got to be able to to link all this all this information, all these data to, uh, sources uh, together to be able to provide that information, so we know where we need to go and make decisions. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, go back to that, um, you know, the, the GM who she's going to have, you know, 30, 40 decisions to make on her desk every single day. Well, mm-hmm. let's give her a, a way to rank order those in terms of value based on risk exposure based on control effectiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I think if we can, if we can continue to do that and, and, you know, integrate the, the technologies that we've got um, and the technologies that we'll adopt, mm-hmm. then, um, then, yeah, I, I think we'll be in a, we'll, we'll be in a good space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know how, how far you look, but you know, this is, you know, on a, my, my business level, I'm now I'm bringing that in. Um, this is a, the, the, what you just walked us through. Um, this is a much bigger issue on the technology side because uh, technology, there's no data point to make a decision. A lot of decisions are made based on, uh, you know, the, uh, you know the, the data collected, not on decision-making data. Um, you know, uh, t- a lot of terms in technology are subjective. What security do you may not be security to me? What performance do you may not be performance to me? So there's a lot of subjective terms in my space. And business leader trying to make a decision on our subjective terms is a challenge. That's why the risk management data, you know, that, that, that needs to collect, that helps them make a decision. So. You know, it's a little bit, you know, a different than, you know, what you mentioned, but yeah, that's, that's in my space. That's, my, that's the struggle has been with that, with that. I think a lot of IT companies struggle with that. Uh, how do we bring that data in a such a way that you can make a business decision, not a technical decisions, because there's a lot of subjective terms in technology. But a sim- similar mindset, what you're talking about, education has to be in my, my space as well. People need to be yeah. educated so they make a better decision that way. Yeah, and, and, and as a kind of trusted advisor and technology provider, we, we yeah. feel that with the experience that we've got in, in our team, uh, that we're able to understand the context of those mm-hmm. that, that those decision makers find themselves in. 
mm-hmm. and and context is everything in risk management. And, and so to be able to, yeah, and, and what's context? It's what's happening, right? Exactly. So being able to measure and communicate what's happening is you know is going to be of vital importance uh, going forward because we don't necessarily have to be more efficient uh, with yeah. our uh, with our decision making. Mm-hmm. We've got to be more productive. Right, which exactly. means that we've got to do more with the same amount that we that we've got. Mm-hmm. And efficiency is is about doing the, the you know uh, doing the, the same with less. Now yeah. Yeah. we're going to have to do more, but what with the same what we've got. So that that's where we could be uh, producing, but helping to produce better decisions and a mm-hmm. higher volume of uh, going forward. And if you can avoid the risk, you know that's another big benefit, right? And then you don't have you may not be able to you know deal with it, but if you can you predict the risk and avoid the risk, that has a financial benefit, right? That you you're not dealing with the risk afterwards. Right? Yeah, and, and and that that's a that, that's a a, a a a higher level conversations that need to be had. So if you mm-hmm. decide to take these risks, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. or you decide to transfer them to a contractor, right? Then mm-hmm. uh, you've got to be able to know how well those controls are working. Right, but then to um, you know to, to terminate that risk mm-hmm. uh, and, and to avoid it altogether. Okay, well that's a that's a st- strategic decision that mm-hmm. um, you know that, that a lot of companies they'll they'll make, but they'll be making that on a semi regular you know basis. This won't be a mm-hmm. you know a, a daily decision. Well, do we do we yeah. terminate this risk? Yes or no? Because if it's an it's within operations, then yeah, we've already made the decision to take it. Yeah. Uh, so we've already made the decision to treat it, pardon me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now we've got to know how well those uh, treatments, those mm-hmm. controls uh, are, are, are working. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Learned so much from our discussion, Like, You know, it's very insightful. You know, um, risk management is one of the critical items. So um, how, what, where can people learn about it? You know, how can they connect with you? Where can they find you? And uh, um, any final advice you would um, offer that business leaders who are looking to learn, you know, and learn in the space, or they're looking to uh, engage with you? What would you uh, recommend, especially the coming out of COVID time? You know, any any recommendation from you? Yeah. So, um, in, in terms of where they can find us, we can go to our website, uh, mindtel.ca. Um, yeah. uh, I'm I'm available on uh, on LinkedIn uh, again, Michael Hartley, um, and, and, and so I think the the the, the piece of advice. Uh, for people who are, whether they're coming back in or um, or they're continuing their their, their operations, is you know, can you answer you know, the three basic questions that um, that I alluded to earlier? Mm-hmm. You know, what's important to your business? So, what are your material? What, what are your most important risks? Uh, what are you doing about them? Mm-hmm. And and how well are those controls working right now? Not last month. Mm-hmm. Not in, in the, the, you know, the, the previous audit. How well are they working right now? If you so can't answer moment. that question. So, in, so right now, yeah, like in this yeah, moment, not in a history. In, yeah, right now. Yeah. yeah. If, if you can't answer that question, that, that right now question, mm-hmm. uh, then you're not in a position to be able to provide that confidence and comfort that you as a, as a manager, you as a leader, uh, are, are in a position where you can steward your organization to achieve the objectives that you set out to at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So really that question around right now, and if that's a, that's a struggle, uh, by all means, uh, you know, feel free to get in touch. Mm-hmm. So as business leaders, if I'm listening to this and I'm finding that, listen, I need to, uh, I need to understand a little bit more. Where can they start a journey? You know, they, they got to go to your website and start learning a little bit about this or, or they got to connect with you and, have a discussion with you. Where can they start the journey, and how can they go about it? Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, either. Um, and we're always open to, uh, to to conversations with um, you know with new organizations. I, I think what we would probably uh, uh, lay or go to in, a, in, an, in an early conversation would be around okay, well, how mature is your organization uh, mm-hmm. from a from a risk management standpoint? Um, and and then we figure that we, we we figure out what would be the the you know the next course of action, uh, the next course of action from there. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, by all means, uh, our, our website, as I mentioned, myintel.ca, mm-hmm. uh, or or reach out to me, uh, reach out to me directly. Be happy to have a chat. Very interesting. Well, I learned so much on a risk manager, Michael. You know that was different perspective that you know I'm, you know I saw that in I you know my space, but I didn't think of that in many different areas that you mentioned. But uh, Definitely, it was so much to learn uh, from our discussion. 
Well, thank you so much for time. Um, you know, I learned so much. I'm sure the business leaders who are listening to our conversation, they learn a lot from our conversation as well. And I would highly recommend that, you know, people to reach out to you, connect with you and have a conversation with you and, and uh, you know, maybe, you know, just get a different perspective and, and uh, take a look at how they're managing the risk. And as for those three questions you just mentioned, um, if they can, you know, they should just simply write those questions down that if they can answer the question and then they got to reach out to you. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. No, we'd be happy. Even if those co- co- companies who say, yeah, we've got answers to all three of those questions, give us a call as well, because I'd love to be able to explore how you got there uh, yeah. as, as well. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Thank you so much for your time, Michael. Uh, Agumi, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to chat with you. It was a great conversation. Thanks again. Great. Great. My pleasure. Thank you.